pull an all-nighter last night. <laughs> As opposed to any other nights during the season. Yeah. Uh, yeah, trying to trying to understand Arizona, you know, and how they play. And they're really good on both ends of the court. They're very efficient offensively. They attack you. They shoot it well. Uh, they got good size. They defend at an incredibly high level. They turn teams over, make life difficult at the rim. So, yeah, they're really good. How do you do that? Do you look at maybe the last 10 games? Do you look at their best games? How are you breaking down what you're studying? Well, yeah, we look at their last, their most recent games, but then also look at games that maybe uh, an opponent plays a similar style, hopefully. You know, and then you watch it and you're like, oh, not really. You know, or you look at it and say, yeah, we can learn something from that. So, I think we have our coaches are – Working around the clock to try to figure out how we best match up and what we what puts us in the best situations to be successful. One other thing here, um, they haven't played since March second, so that's two weeks. You guys obviously played last Friday. Is there any thing you can take from that? I mean, you're obviously be rested. Right, been on both sides of that. So I think whichever side you're on, you probably look at the other side and say that's a better advantage. So I think ultimately, you know, our our young ladies had some time off and then we've kind of gotten back at it and you know hopefully that that favors us in the sense that you know we're we're in a good spot hopefully so coach you get in there you know sunday evening and yeah i mean probably crunching numbers and, and looking at the but when that show starts you know what, what are you thinking at, at that point are you thinking in out don't know i mean well i believe that our young ladies deserve to be in you know from before the the Big 12 tournament, I thought that we they had put themselves in a, in a spot where they'd earned that right as the as a team that was tied for fourth in the Big 12. And then you look at the quality wins, and then you compare our resume to other teams that they say are on the bubble, and all of it appears as though we are in a really good spot. But again, ultimately, every selection committee is a little bit different. I've had the fortune of being on the side that we were on last night. I've had the fortune, misfortune, or unfortunate situation being on the other side of it. So, you know, you you don't know for sure until till you till your name pops up or it doesn't. It, to, last year when we were at South Dakota, we were the very last team that was announced. We knew we were in and that was nerve-wracking. We thought maybe they forgot about us. So it's nerve-wracking whenever at that point in time. Do you think that um, the double round robin um, was fully appreciated? Certainly it was by the committee. I and mean, you played the top teams twice. Right. You know, and some of those teams that were on the bubble maybe didn't play a top team at all. Well, certainly the strength of our of our conference and the depth of our conference this year just outstanding. And so now that we're in, you hope that it prepares you to play, you know, play at a high level. For you, when you when you, when you came and took a new job, and now you got a bunch of new girls and the, the whole the city and everything else. Uh, did you feel like a rookie coach again? Did it, did, was it like being reborn? And how, how did you how did you approach putting things together? Well, I don't know that I felt like a rookie coach because I felt a lot older than that at that point in time, unless I was an old rookie. But I, I, every experience is new; it's different, and you're learning. You know, you're learning a whole new group and and trying to bring everyone together and trying to teach a new system, but also modify your system to fit the players that you have. And you know, throughout the course of the entire season, I think our, our coaches have really been diligent about trying to continue to work on basic simple fundamental to help us get better and and at times you know we've we've seen that we've, we've seen our young ladies really grow and you know played really well down the stretch and that's going to be you know hopefully important for us to build upon now that we're we have a chance to keep playing speaking of that down the stretch uh, madison came became a scorer how did that come about did you sit down and talk to her or did i mean that wasn't there, the 20-point score, for three, four years. I mean, and all of a sudden, she said, it's my, my, this is my game now. Right. Well, I think in, in Maddie's scenario, you know, she really started the season this year in a very different role than she's been in the past. And, and the, the challenging part about that is, and she did an incredible job of accepting the challenge, is that when you're not a, a young lady who is a primary scorer on a team in the past, then to become a primary scorer, you have to have that desire. A coach can tell you all you want. You've got to hunt shots. You've got to be a threat. You've got to do all those type of things. And that helps players. But ultimately, that when that player wants to be have that, have, have that responsibility, things can really take off. And I think she's someone certainly from the beginning of the year all the way throughout who had that mindset and that approach. And that's not always typical for a point guard. 
You know, that can that doesn't always happen that way. So to her credit, we needed that out of her, and she certainly brought that and pl- has played really, really well. To what Bob was asking before about first year, I mean, you've had first years at other places. Um, Ten months ago, you were wearing a different logo, different colors, the whole deal. What has been unique about this situation to you? That's a great question. What's been unique? When you, I think when you start at, at a, in a program, you don't know what you don't know. And so you're, you learn, you're trying to learn the players. You're trying to learn what their tendencies are. You're trying to learn what we can do things in practice all we want. But then when the lights are on, it's a little bit different. And then you know players are going to play the way that they're comfortable and they're going to do what they do. And then how do you as coaches try to then maybe modify what you do to fit who they are naturally? J.J. is a great rebounder, for example, an incredible rebounder. In a lot of systems, we may t- say J.J. should be the kid that gets back. But at the same time, she's a really good offensive rebounder. So that doesn't really match up really well. So maybe we have to modify a little bit of we do of what we do to use her her gifts and her ability and her instincts in that kind of way. So I think it, it takes us some time to, I guess, realize, recognize when we get into game action, what the, the, does that really look like for, for our team? This group, what you don't know is is always how how hungry, how are they, how what's your ability to fight through challenges, what it, how resilient is your group going to be, you know, when you face uh, some losses or adversity, are you going to bounce back? How do you bounce back? Who's going to take that initiative? Are, you know, one of the you can't let it hit, you know, you can't let it affect your next performance, and and so I think all those things are are things that we've learned about ourselves through the course of the year. And I think what's really fun about this group is that we've continued to battle and we've continued to progress and we've continued to get better. Even, you know, even in our last few games, there were some defensive rotations that I thought, I, I don't, uh, they're making great plays or just flying around and helping each other. And, you know, it, it, not that they don't normally do that in practice, but now we're seeing it in practice more consistently. And then it's fun to see it out, in, you know, in game action. So I think those are things that are, are fun. They are, our young ladies are, they're really excited. They're, they really had fun at the selection show last night. They, even though they, you know, Maddie asked me a question yesterday after practice. She said, coach, how do you feel? And I said, I feel good. And they were going to lift. <laughs> I feel great because I'm not going to lift. I feel, I feel great. I, I feel good. I feel like our chances are really, really good. And you know what? We're going to watch it in the film room. And for whatever reason, during my coaching career, that's been a good spot. So maybe there's some superstition. So we're going to do that. I feel good about this. She was like, oh, okay, great. And so it worked out. So that was good. That was certainly good. What about the, the demands beyond the building? I mean, the fundraising, the different things that are required of your time now. How have you adjusted to that? Well, I think it's it, it, you do what you need to do, and you find a way to get it done. And you know, certainly, I'm really fortunate that we have a very experienced staff, and so they can take whatever it is and pick it up and run with it, and and just do it. And you know, I I, I know I have confidence that it's going to get done at a really high level. So, whatever it is, we have to we have a mentality in our program that we have to find a way. And I guess as coaches, we're kind of the same way. I would guess your most comfortable time though is in front of tape studying teams. That's kind of your sanctuary a little bit. <laughs> I, I love doing it. Love the X's and O's of it. Love the love the team building aspect of it too. And so uh, it's it's really kind of fun. I think there are challenges and there are ways. You know, we're not athlete. We're athletes at a different different way now. We're not out there playing as coaches. So you got to find a different way to compete. And is it in slowing this? action down or taking this play away or is it putting something else in or is it what does that look like so you find a way to compete and you're like oh, okay yeah, i feel good about that or oh man <laughs> didn't do a very good job about that Coach, on, a, on, on, on with jj uh, between now and friday like what, what do you guys have to do to just try to keep her off her ankle or i mean obviously she probably wants to practice and then right and go at it but obviously there's probably going to be some adjustments right there. yesterday was a pretty light day for us and and she did really well didn't have any issues with it and so today is a, a going to be a more aggressive day with practice so we'll kind of see and monitor and kind of make sure that she's in a good position to play were you familiar with uh, as mary martinez when she was at wvu at all just a little bit so what jumps out about her when you watch arizona's film or her, her ability to rebound, her size, her length. She shoots it. She scores it. And she does a lot of things really well. She can block shots. So I think overall she's a very 
very competitive young lady, very complete player, and and I think can can give you can play for you in different ways. I think she can play kind of different positions and and make an impact. I should say probably in different ways. She had already transferred, I think, before you probably signed her or got her. Heard right, all that time, yeah. So I just think she's she's doing really well. She's having a very good year. Did you give, ever get a chance to talk to her at all? A bit, yeah, a little bit. As far as sites go, College Park is near D.C., which is a very important city to Morgantown, WVU. A lot of fans, opportunity. It's got to be exciting to be able to have fans drive within a drivable distance to watch you play. It is, and and that's something that we're excited about. So hopefully we sell a lot of tickets, and hopefully we have a lot of Mountaineer fans there. It should be – it's close. And we don't have that. You know, it was really interesting – in in our conference tournament because we're not very close to the conference tournament. It's really challenging for our fans to come and to support. But we don't have that this time around. So you had a good crowd there at the Kansas City. We did. We had a good crowd. You know, I think it's – and there's always a comfort factor when you have more of your fans there. And we have an opportunity because it is right down the road. And, you know, I think at first when you – well, the way the bracket was released was kind of interesting because it popped up. And however many teams were in the bracket were, were announced and we looked at it and finally, something, finally someone in the room caught it. <laughs> and then there was – Pandemonium. I was like, well, I who are we playing, by the way? And where where are we going? And so it was kind of interesting how that all transpired. It, we joked about this. Aaron and I were talking right before practice yesterday. So at the last time we were in a situation where we were waiting for an at-large bid, that was the year that the, the bracket re, or was announced early. It was leaked, one of those type of things. And so as we were getting ready to practice yesterday, I'm like, kind of be nice if they leaked that again at the time maybe it seemed inconvenient but and so then it, when it I don't know if it was meant to happen that way or not but when it did happen we just kind of had a good laugh about that so it took us a while to figure out who we actually were playing because we just saw our name at that point in time and all of the names up there and trying to scan through them quickly and then and then figure it out you know, the way the tournament's set up there's the unique uh, aspect of playing on the home team's core in the second round you did it last year against Baylor what what do you impart on your players if you get fortunate to advance well first we try to do what we can do to advance and, and then kind of go from there and you know we'll we'll uh kind of cross that bridge when we get to that if if we're fortunate enough to do that do you think your sport will ever get to the point where you can get away from that because that is a big advantage for the home team it's a huge advantage yeah it's it, it's incredible and, and at the same time you know you've got to you're in a position to continue playing. You got to do what you can do to put yourself in as good a position to be, you know, to, to compete against Arizona and their size and their length and everything else, and then take it from there. What does it take to survive and advance in, in the NCAA tournament? Well, you're going to have to be really gritty. You're going to have to be really tough and competitive. And, you know, ultimately, it, I think the two teams, uh, you know, in, in Arizona and, and in our team are very – very tough defensively. I think we both try to turn our opponents over. You know, we both try to turn our opponents over and then get out and, and push in transition. And so I think it's it'll be kind of a fun matchup. But I think ultimately, you know, you talk about wanting to control what you can control, and that's take care of the basketball on one end, get good shots, you know, work to get offensive rebounds. Not really a strength of ours. It hasn't been. It's a strength of theirs. So for us defensively to try to make them uncomfortable, whatever that means, and we're still trying to figure all that out um, to the best of our ability. And, and then – I finish plays at a high level. Coach, uh, at South Dakota, playing in the NCAA tournament, there's obviously that natural, uh, you know, mid-major versus the big school. You know, we're the underdogs. And I don't know how much you played that up with your players back then. But do you think it'll be any different now coaching in the NCAA tournament at a Power 5 school? Because obviously it's probably a little different uh, uh, aspect there. I think ultimately the – your young ladies have to be really excited and really hungry, and and I think our young ladies will be. I do, and regardless of where where you're positioned at, I think last year we were a ten seed too, and so in some way we are the underdog at that point in time because that's that's what our seeding tells us that we are. So that's who we are. Now let's go out and let's battle and let's compete. Probably a question for when the season's over, but when you think back to when you took this job. Where did NCAA tournament figure in your equation of the things that you were working toward? I mean, was it realistic when you think back about it? 
I think ultimately because we are a process-driven program, you know, expectation number one is to be your best. You know, we talked yesterday's message going into practice is from one of the books that we read this summer, which is training camp. And that message was the best do ordinary better than the rest. And so, you know, did, did we look at that? Did we look at last year's team and the returners and the kids coming in and say, boy, we're in a position that we should be able to contend for this or for that. How do you even know? How do you know any of that? And, and so we, we focus on what that process looks like, how, getting the ball around the rim, taking care of the basketball, you know, guarding without fouling, finishing plays, those type of things. And then as the season wore on, we kept getting better. And that's kind of fun. It's really fun to be a part of that. It's great. It's fun to see that. And, and then when you, you achieve at a higher level and you're competing at a higher level, and we didn't always do that. We, even, even in the end of or middle of our conference season, we had stretches where we didn't finish plays very well. And, and so we've, then we adjusted how we practiced. Even though we were practicing drills to work on that skill set, they weren't working very well for whatever reason. And so we had to find new ways to work on it. And maybe the new ways worked a little bit better. Maybe the film worked. How do you really know? And, but something was working. So then we kept doing that something. And then, to, then that wasn't working. Then we had to do it a little bit differently. And so the, the fun part about it is finding ways to continue to either grow our knowledge base of what we want to do and the why behind what we're doing, what we're doing, as well as the ability to actually go do that. And then the comfort to say, yeah, we did that. We do that all the time. That's what we do. You know, so again, yesterday's message was the best do ordinary, better than the rest. Our, our job is to play basic, simple, fundamental basketball, share the ball, take care of the ball, get good shots on the other end, work to limit opportunities for your opponents and finish plays and see, it doesn't, it's not very complicated, I guess, when you put it that way. And that's kind of our approach. Consistently made postseason tournaments in your career. I believe it was 14 of 15 before this year, now 15 of 16. You know, what do you remember about preparing for that first postseason tournament and that first NCAA tournament? And how do you feel like you've changed as a coach? You know, since <laughs> that's then? a long time ago. I don't know if I remember it. But that I think the the excitement of this time of the year is something that's really special. Every year that you go through it, it's really special. And and so for this group to be in a position to play in the big dance is something that is really exciting. Now, how will we practice today now that we know? I don't know, because we haven't been in this position before. And so how will we respond to it? I don't know. And if we don't respond very well, then tomorrow we better do something differently so that we get better. So that'll be interesting to, to see. I, I, I believe that because we're excited, we're, it, what happens a lot of times at tournament time is that all of a sudden, all of a sudden things register at a different level. And, and, and I thought that happened before the Big 12 tournament. Now, maybe that didn't show all in all ways on on the court but it means that we our kids were coaching each other on the sidelines in a new in another way not that we hadn't done that earlier in the year but we didn't do it earlier because they didn't really know how to do that they didn't know what the what we were trying to teach it and they didn't even understand so how if you don't understand it, how do you teach somebody else and now they're saying things about hey you, ball screen defense this is what you have to do no this is you got to do it this way this is important for us and so i, I think our our desire to do well is really high, and that's what you need. Then you have to go out and you have to execute at a high level. I guess kind of going back to John's question and kind of how you answered that, it's <coughs> not one specific point in the season where you're, you look around and you're like, this is an NCAA tournament team, but a collection of points, a collection of efforts that you kind of said, this is a team that can go somewhere. Is that fair? I think that's very fair. I think it started probably in, in Florida, in, in our tournament in Florida, and you know, certainly our game against Georgia when we were down, whatever it was, 16, 17 points in the second half. And to see that was probably the first time that we really saw that high, high level of resilience. Because at that point in time, it had been pretty easy to just kind of hang our heads and just kind of give in a little bit. Or even if you don't hang your head, but you just don't have that same zip and pop rather than that determination. And again, I think maybe some things kind of went our way. Maybe they miss a shot. Maybe we make a shot. Maybe, you know, we get a steal. Maybe something happens. And then that gives you a little bit of, of energy and a little bit of burst. But then all of a sudden you could see just kind of the, the collective group taking off at that point in time. And I think that's when it started. Now, did it stay there the whole time? No, it didn't. Because we, we still had to get better in a lot of different areas you know and and I thought we did and I think what what this group has has it, it, when you look at at gaining 
momentum and getting better, you, you want it to just say, okay, well, we, we did it, so now we're going to just go do it again, and now we're going to go do it again. But it doesn't really work that way. You may get better in one area, and then you, maybe you get the same shots, but you miss them. And so now you feel like you're not as good, or a team makes some shots that they didn't make in another scenario, or you're really focusing on zone offense for example, and then also because you're really focusing on zone offense, maybe your man offense that you haven't you haven't really been together all that long isn't quite as good, and so now we have to go back and work on that. Then we have to see something different. Maybe we're going to guard ball screens you know, one way. I think before we played Texas Tech at home, for example, we hadn't hard-hedged ball screens very often because we weren't very good at it at that point in time, very honestly. And so, And it kind of extended us. But we felt like we had to in that game, and we started to do it a little bit more, and we got better at it. But then to understand why against one opponent this seems to make a lot of sense and we should do it this way, but against an an opponent who runs a very similar offense, it doesn't make as much sense based upon their personnel or maybe what they're looking for. And so understanding and then being able to to digest it and then take it back, I think our players got uh, just kept getting better at a lot of those things. You know, so I do think it was a collective collective effort and it's a it's something that we're still in the process of of getting getting there if that makes sense gotta ask you now have you ever seen a ball stick on a rim as long as that wow that was crazy wasn't it yeah I, to the that was it, yeah that that was tough if the heater was blowing the other way it could have blown it off i think uh, well maybe we should go back and check on that <laughs> coach as you were saying you know you guys finished Tied for fourth in a you know, really good league. Uh, you guys swept Baylor getting into the NCAA. Is there any way to gauge what kind of you know, impact this run has had, you know, in terms of like, you know, recruiting or just, you know, kind of getting things out there? Uh, is it, or maybe too early for, for Yeah, that? I don't know how to exactly go about saying, giving, excuse me, just giving a value to that, yeah. you know, but I do think there is value in it. You know, what, what does it, when things happen, it's easy to say, oh, our kid, this happened because of that. But you don't really know, you know those type of things. And so you just keep working and keep trying to be creative and trying to get better at all times. You know, kind of going off of that, I've got a bunch of Twitter transfer portal accounts on my phone. And today it's been, you know, blowing up with all the new additions. At this time of season, how do you balance, you know, focusing on that and focusing on the tournament as well? And yeah, certainly right now for us, our, our, our my attention is really on on where our team is is at, and I know we have other coaches who are looking at all those type of things because I guess you know ultimately there's there, there's value and timeliness is important and all those type of things, but ultimately you know I'm really focusing on what we have to do and still trying to learn who Arizona is and what are they what are their tendencies and you can watch a game or two you can clip those games you can watch them, but until you really study. For a while, it's hard to really know that. Great, thank you.